So let's say that you know you want to improve the sound of your car audio system, but you have not installed an advanced digital signal processor. Can we use just the equalizer settings on the aftermarket head unit to get great sound? What are the benefits and drawbacks to only using the head unit to tune our system? What would the step-by-step -step tuning process look like for that simple tune? What microphone can we use? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. And that, my friends, is coming on up. So I recently finished installing this new aftermarket head unit. This is a Stinger High 10 in a Jeep Wrangler. So far in this vehicle, this is the only upgrade that's been done. So this gives us a great opportunity to see, can we really tune the system using just our head unit. Now, if we go into our sound settings, the main two things I'm gonna be focusing on in this video is the tuning of our equalizer. We'll start with setting that to flat and also the tuning of our time correction here. Now, if you wanna know what crossover is, I do have a full video that really goes into detail explaining how to properly set your crossovers. I'll link it up in the corner of the screen. Now, what is an equalizer and why do we need this anyways? After all, if we've upgraded to an aftermarket head unit here, we know that the electrical signal coming out of this head unit is likely going to be nice and flat. That's what we want to achieve, right? Well, the key word here is electrical. The electrical signal coming out of this head unit going to all of our speakers, you know, down here and up in the dash and in the rear roll bar in this vehicle, that electrical signal is flat, but that does not mean that the acoustic signal, the signal that we're actually hearing coming from the speakers, it doesn't mean that that is nice and flat. So what the equalizer allows us to do in layman's terms is we are turning up or decreasing the volume of certain frequencies. In this case, we have a 15 band equalizer, which means that we can adjust 15 different frequencies. And it's really nice on this aftermarket head unit. They show us that this is the sub bass range. They also have the bass range here, low mids, mid range, upper mids, and the brilliance. So obviously your subwoofers and your larger speakers are gonna be down here. And then your smaller speakers, like your tweeters that are playing the highs are going to be in these frequency ranges. So what you're doing is you're going to go through and basically let's say that this car has very, very strong highs. Let's say that it sounds too bright, quote unquote. So what we could do is we could reduce the volume, if you will, or reduce the output of those particular frequencies. Now, something that's important to remember here, and I'm going to bring this up again later, is realize that when we're adjusting all of this, it is tuning the EQ for the whole system. So what that means is literally, if I adjust this right here, that's going to affect both the right side and the left side, which is down here. It's going to affect the frequency response of both sides and even the back speakers of the vehicle. The reason I mention this is on many of my build videos here on the channel, I will feature what is called a DSP. The DSP might be built into the amplifier or it might be a standalone unit like this. And the reason that you need a DSP is the DSP allows you to control this equalization for each individual speaker. So just keep that in mind. The reason the DSP is advantageous is we're able to adjust everything for each speaker individually. This speaker is gonna have its own acoustic response at my listening position, and it's gonna be different than this speaker. So I don't want you guys to be confused. Just understand that having a standalone DSP is far superior to having only the head unit, but if you only have the head unit, that's what we're covering in this video, how to get it to sound as good as it possibly can before hopefully you guys make this upgrade in the future. The other thing we're gonna be covering in this video that I mentioned is the time correction, AKA time alignment. So what is time alignment? Well, this speaker here is actually further away from my listening position here in the driver's seat than this speaker is down here. And the speed of sound is relatively slow. So what we can do with time correction is we can plug in our distances to the listening position and we can make it so that the speaker that is closer to us is actually delayed in order to have the sound wave from this further speaker arrive at our listening position at the exact same time. So in this video, we're gonna be tuning all of this to optimize for our driver's seat position. Now this question always comes up, if you're optimizing for the driver position, aren't you kind of screwing everything up for the passenger position? And the answer is yes, you're making it less optimal for this position. But with a lot of these factory head units, what you can do is you can set up multiple presets and that way you could have one where the time alignment is just adjusted to the center of the car or you could even have it optimized for the passenger. 
There are some more advanced things you can do like using an all pass filter. That's more advanced discussion that comes along with using a standalone DSP. And again, I wanna reiterate that the standalone DSP is even better for the time correction for the example of using active speakers. So we have a speaker down here in the dash and we also have a smaller speaker up here. Well, those are both being fed the front right signal, which means if we delay this signal, it's actually delaying those speakers as a pair. But Obviously those speakers are different distances away from my listening position. So that's why it would be advantageous to use an active speaker configuration where we have many channels on our amplifier. And again, we can control each individual channel with all these multiple outputs on our standalone DSP. So really the only benefit of having the aftermarket head unit without the DSP is you're not spending the money on the DSP. There are far more drawbacks because you are leaving a lot of tuning flexibility on the table, but nevertheless, if this is what we have, what can we do? In order to properly tune our system, we're going to want to use a measurement mic. The reason we want to use a measurement microphone rather than just our ears is our ears can easily become fatigued. If you're not trained on how to properly listen, you're just going to get a lot better results with using a proper measurement tool. Now this is more of a professional grade solution right here, the Audio Control DMRTA that I would normally use for tuning a high-end system with a DSP. But in this case, since we're just tuning our head unit, we wanna use something a little bit more budget-friendly. So I'm gonna go with the Audio Control SA-4140i SPL mic. In fact, Audio Control is our monthly channel sponsor, so I wanna take a quick second to show you guys a little bit about this microphone. You can see once we open everything up, this is everything that's included here. We have an AC adapter, and you can see they've given us several different plugs that you can use depending on where you're at in the world. So in this case, I'm using the standard plug here for the United States. The reason this has an AC adapter is we can plug it into the microphone, and then the microphone can be charging our Apple device while we're using this. This is really nice for long tuning sessions, but you don't need to be plugged in in order to use this because this will run off the power of your phone or your tablet. You can see a quick list of all the compatible devices here. Of course, a manual inside here. And since this is a calibrated microphone, they give us their calibration certificate here with the date calibration value, everything that we have here. And that value will actually communicate with the program which is the mobile tools app from Audio Control that I have downloaded here, ready to go. And this is my first time ever plugging this in. Let's see, so accessory found. We are good to go if we go to the RTA mode here. Now we can see that it's bouncing around recording my voice, so we are good to start our measurement process. Let's head on over to the vehicle. If you guys wanna learn more about the SA4140 ISPL, check out the links down in the video description. Now they do give us a mic stand connection that we could put the microphone in, but I found that a good way to hold your microphone in the listening position is just to kind of tuck it under the headrest here, kind of clamp this down. So that is in position. We next want to set our time alignment. To do this, we take a tape measure and measure the approximate distance from the microphone tip to where the cone of the speaker would be. On speaker pairs like this application where there's multiple speaker locations off the same signal, you generally want to measure to the larger of the speakers. So I have taken my measurements with my total chicken scratch there, and we're gonna move on to programming them in here. So front right was 51 inches. I'm set on inches, so I can go ahead and hold this until we get up to 51. So that's 51, I'm gonna move on to doing the rest here. This one's 35. I've got everything set here and there's no subwoofers in this vehicle, so I'm just gonna leave those at zero since it doesn't matter, that signal isn't even connected. If you do have subwoofers connected, if you had one subwoofer, you would do the same thing where you measure to the cone. If you have two subwoofers, just measure an average distance. The subwoofer waves are so long that it's not as critical to get an ultra precise measurement, but just make sure that if you're using a stereo signal, it would be okay to have these to be slightly different. But if you're using a mono signal to your subwoofers, you would want these to be exactly the same. Now that all the time correction is set, we can move on to setting this equalizer. Now I've heard this idea before that, oh, your equalizer should look like a smiley face. You should have the lows boosted and you should have the highs boosted. And that's a good starting point. But the problem with this is this assumes far too much. This assumes that the base of the vehicle is crappy and it assumes that the highs are crappy. So you just wanna boost those, but that's not the case. We're actually gonna go through with our measurements and we're going to achieve something far better by performing an actual measurement using our RTA. 
So I've got the RTA going here. I've increased the decay time just so the bars aren't bouncing quite as quickly. It allows you to set a little bit better. I've got the equalizer screen ready to go here. And now what we wanna do is play pink noise. Now you can download pink noise from the audio control website. I'm gonna play it here. And if we turn it up, just so you guys can hear what it sounds like. Pink noise sounds like static, but in layman's terms, what it basically is is equal output at every octave that we're gonna be measuring on our RTA. So since we know it's going to be equal output, we can adjust the acoustic response using our equalizer to make sure it matches what we want on our RTA. Now the question is, when we go to do this, do we want it to be completely a flat line? And the answer is no. Sometimes a flat response curve doesn't sound all that great. A lot of people will say, well, it doesn't really seem to have that much bass it doesn't really feel very alive or very warm. So traditionally a nice curve is you kind of want a little bit more base and then you kind of want to roll off in this range right here between 125 and 250, you want to roll off, I don't know, 6 dB or so and then have nice flat mid-range frequencies and then you kind of want to roll off again on the highs. Basically what I've just described is a target curve and there are multiple different target curves and people have different preferences on what target curve they like. So that's where you get the preference applied to your system is what target curve you enjoy. I traditionally like a little bit more bass so I'm going to be tuning a little bit heavier on this end but nevertheless the point is we're actually adjusting and actually measuring to get better performance. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn up the pink noise to a moderate listening level. You would normally want to make sure that all the doors are closed. I need to make sure I have some light coming in here from my camera light so you guys can see what I'm doing, but I'm going to turn that up and then I'm going to watch the RTA as I make each adjustment on this screen. So let's go. So this is where I've ended up with my tuning and I've saved this as preset number one. A couple of notes here, you generally want to cut. You don't want to over boost as that can lead to distortion in the audio signal, but I've made all of these adjustments here and I want to give you guys a little bit of a before and after. I'd show you real time, but I don't want to try to talk over the pink noise, but you can see with this first measurement here, this is the before I did any adjustments. You can see that there's a really sharp valley here around 200 Hertz, a little bit of a peak here. It's kind of sketchy in the middle and then a big drastic difference between our mid-range frequencies and our highs. And then if we go to our after, on our after, this valley is much more shallow and you can see that the mid-range frequencies better match up with the high end. I intentionally left a lot of low end output here as that's kind of what I like for my target curve. You can see that we don't have anything really below 40 Hertz and that's because there's currently no subwoofer in this vehicle. We'll be taking care of that of course in the future. So do keep that in mind. If you see that there's not a whole lot of bass, don't try to crank that up because you don't have the speaker to create that bass. So we just left that at the zero mark. But nevertheless, here is our before again, and here is our after, definitely measuring a lot better. I listened to it, it sounds a lot better as well. And again, do keep in mind that with a dedicated digital signal processor, I could get this looking even better. But for being just our aftermarket head unit, this adjustment process has definitely paid off. So now that we understand that process for basic tuning using only our aftermarket head unit, we are off to getting better sound. If you guys would like to see an in-depth tuning tutorial focused on using DSP, let me know. If you're new here on this channel, I do car audio lessons, product overviews, and build log videos, and I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Don't forget that next time you're tuning your system, you can use show sponsor Audio Control's SA-4140i SPL tuning mic. You can learn more information about this at the links down in the video description. A special thanks to them, along with Bryson, Mike, Ali, Jared, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible, and as always, thank you for watching.